All right, I understand IDA may be and will be wrong sometimes for function identification, but we do have to base our implementation on something. I guess admitting that your implementation is as good as the tool you're identifying functions is a good compromise and allows you to implement your technique. What's your opinion on that? Specifying the potential problem of the implementation is inherent to the use tool enough? That's a possibility. But again, if you're using ground truth, you can, and this is an important thing to understand. There's two different things, a couple different things we're doing. So for example, and, and I know Fish mentioned this towards anger, about anger, we're using developing tools to analyze binary that are stripped of all this debug and dwarf data and other things, so we don't expect the, the stuff there. But for validating our tools, we can have the full ground truth. So IDA may not be perfect in detecting things, and when we, if we build on IDA, our tool won't be perfect. But when we're comparing how good our tool is, we have to have another source, an oracle of the real ground truth that we're mapping to, and we compare to that real ground truth for validating our tool, even though our tool doesn't use it when it's running. Yeah, because all our stuff is, I've got two data sets of data sets, unstripped with all the debug and all the simple table data and everything, and then stripped. My tool runs on the stripped, generates data which I compare with what I got from the unstripped. And if it's good enough for all the unstripped, all 97,000 binaries in our current data set, though they're compiled many different ways, so it's really probably just a couple thousand X, uh, different programs. If it works well in that, I'm hoping it works well in the wild. But yeah, be honest about what we're doing, how we're doing it, where do we get this data, make it available. What's your tool that generates the ground truth? I, oh, it's a script, it's only three lines of code that strips it from the symbol table. Show me those three lines of code so I know what you're doing. Our first three lines of code stripping from the symbol table miss the fact there's hidden functions in there because they're flagged a little differently in the symbol table than regular functions and we missed that. Our program didn't. Our program actually found things. We said, oh, false positives until we dug in and looked at the code and said, oh, we were right. Tool's right, our ground truth was wrong, oops. I like it that way than the other way. Uh, any other questions? In my, uh, one question. Uh, so uh, how do you deal with, how do you deal when you have multiple semantically equalizing ground truth. For instance, especially when we are comparing CFD, what we have realized is there will be a jump instruction, jump to the next time to the circuit. IDA doesn't break, so IDA breaks it. IDA breaks a basic order of the jump instruction. Whereas ACTA doesn't break. Like it makes, it combines all both basic blocks, it's just basic block. Both that be fun and both that semantically equalized, both are right. Okay, so, so that was an interesting question, and if you didn't hear it in uh, video land, what if they're semantically equivalent but different ground truths? So, and I've seen this in compiled code, which is not fully optimized, you may have a jump to the next instruction. Why would you get that at the end of an if-then if block with no else? The then, the compiler generic code is supposed to jump from the then part past the else part, and at the beginning, if it's false, you jump to the else part. Well, if there's no else part, that's all one line. So the end of the jump at the if goes to there and you have jump followed by jump. If you're counting basic blocks, I didn't talk about basic blocks, but basic blocks, sequence of instructions that have a single entry point and are executed always together. Single exit point, I guess, too. This is where it's different. Is it a single exit point? Or multiple exit points when you do your basic block definition. So if we think about it, are these equivalent Maybe. Basic blocks. Is your definition of basic block, even if you jump from one instruction to another, is the leaving of the basic block a jump or something else? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't have an answer to that. The community needs to decide which one it is or say we are using definition A of a basic block. Yeah, and I like, to, I like to use the term inflection points, any place where there's a break in the contiguous flow of the code. So an, an inflection in is where it's a jump or it's a call of a jump or target. Inflection out is where it's leaving the basic block, a jump or return, a call or whatever. Um, and so for me, I'd agree with, you, with uh, Ida that that's the end of the basic block. I had to figure out who I would agree with. <laughs> Other questions? Well, thank you all for attending. <laughs>